Hi everyone, I'm Furkan, and welcome back to my game development series. In this video, I'll show you the improvements I've made to the dribbling mechanics, on the way to completing the core gameplay of my indie football game. And later in the video, I'll also show you how I added your national flags into the game. Before I developed the physics-based character animation system, I've implemented a foundation for the dribbling mechanics with the procedural animation system. It was a simple system that makes the character follow the ball and override any step if a ball touch will happen. Since it was designed for the procedural animation system, I migrated the code base to support the physics-based system. Then it became ready for further improvements, and I started to fill the to-do list by playing with the ball. I started with creating a formula for the ball touch force, based on the character orientation, velocity, movement direction and current state of the ball. The formula wasn't in its perfect form, but at least it created a base that is going to be refined with edge case implementations. Then, I fixed the final step orientation for overridden steps. The problem was the final orientation stayed unchanged and should have followed the orientation of the new step path. That is needed for completing the actual movement and not limiting the movement freedom. And the incident happened again. Hitting gritty was obviously not intended here, but it occurs sometimes after resetting the character position and state. I'm not going to investigate the roots of this error, because it brings me joy out of nowhere. The next improvement was adding a case to the touch force formula for if the ball needs to be kicked stronger to catch up with the character. At this point, I added a glowing arc for the kick power magnitude indicator. I wasn't testing the mechanics with ball kicking yet, but I just added it out of strong desire. I modified the ball follower mechanism to fix the error that occurs while the character changes its direction. This is a too simple approach, but it works for now. I did some work with calculating the trajectories for both ball and character, but couldn't get any useful results. I'll update this formula while covering each case. The character has a strong foot and will use that foot to dribble, but in reality, the football player also needs to use their weak foot to elevate the dribbling experience. So I added some conditions to decide when to use the weak foot to dribble the ball. I iteratively improved the experience to some degree, so the dribbling feels okay but obviously the visuals are not at that level and lots of improvements are waiting in the to-do list. But at least it looks good from far away. While debugging, I wanted to see when exactly each foot hit the ball, so I added a glowing effect to foot models. By the way, this glowing effect that I use everywhere is simply increasing the base color of anything beyond normal color limits. The rest is the job of the Bloom implementations of my game engine. Limited resources always pushes your creativity, so throw your weights to move faster. At this point, I was almost ready to move on from dribbling mechanics for now. I'm not fully satisfied with the result, but that's how my development progress works. I already filled up the to-do list by playing the game, and I imagine this list will blow up after you, actual players playing the game. Finally, I added a little change to separate the ball reach factor for each movement state to enable more natural movement especially for sprinting. Before jumping into the shooting mechanics, I thought maybe I could add some elements to the scene because I know it's boring, and it started to bother me too much. I remembered that I have a cloth physics setup, which I used for the goal net. I said, why don't I use this technology to add national flags to the scene? Then I wrote a new function to add a flag in the scene. I asked Claude to write me some code for updating the wind vector. That would have been needed to see the simulation work. I carefully downloaded the flags with correct aspect ratios from Wikipedia. By the way, I chose the top 5 countries from the YouTube analytics of my channel. Actually, I found the correct ranking with a slight difference after making this part. The channel audience looks almost worldwide. I'm also open to any idea of making something else with this kind of data. Please share your ideas in the comments section. The flags were okay, but since they all share the same parameters, they also behave exactly the same because of the deterministic physics. I asked Claude to add some seed to the calculations for making each flag behave unique. Then I filled these seed values with important numbers for each nation for the sake of authenticity. And finally the flags looked better and simulated differently than each other. The result has given a more vibrant look to the scene. I also modeled a basic flagpole in Blender to improve the aesthetic. By the way, I'm trying new stuff to improve the visual quality of the scene but I don't want to rush with this because it's meaningless when the gameplay mechanics are not complete enough. As you can see, I already started with the shooting mechanics. I want to complete the basics of dribbling, shooting and passing mechanics before starting for the goalkeeper. While developing my game, I may share some general programming and game engine development videos in this channel. Please let me know in the comments if you think I should cover a specific topic in a video. 
There were lots of comments that suggest that I need to show more code in my videos, and I also want to show code too. Thanks for watching. See you next time.